Hi, I'm Mrs McTaggart and this is the final video in the Similar cha uh, Shapes chapter and it's numbered number five. Before this, you should have hopefully seen all the others and be really comfortable now doing similar areas, similar volumes and similar lengths. I'm going to look at what's called reverse similarity. So these are the more problem solving questions where we tell you two shapes are similar and we've told you the volumes this time perhaps and you have to find out a missing side. So it's kind of like a working backwards to work out what your side is. Okay, so this question here was in a past paper a couple of years ago. I've changed the numbers just so we get nicer answers to um, help the method out. There are more than one way to do this. Um, normally in the marking schemes, we see three different common approaches coming up. Um, so this may not be the way your teacher is showing yet. But for me, I cheat a bit like uh, I do with any reverse question. I start with the formula and then change the subject and kind of work backwards. So I think, well, what would I have done if I was to find the big volume? So I would have done my unknown, I would have done a scale factor first, so let's call this bit over here, let's call this x, the thing we're trying to find. So I would have said, well, my scale factor was x over 16. We're talking about volume, so I would have then cubed that, and I would have times it by the small volume, and I would have got an answer of 1,125. Now from there, I will then um, change the subject, and I will say, right, okay, well, x cubed... Um, I would make that x cubed over 16 cubed. I don't need to necessarily work that out just now. And I would think, right, okay, the opposite of dividing by 576 would be to divide by 576. And I would do that first of all. Then I would think, right, what do I need to do to get x on its own? Well, I need to move the 16 cubed. So x cubed would be this fraction here times 16 cubed. And then whatever that answer is, I will cube root it. Now, it's a very messy number, so I'm just going to go to my calculator and work it out. And it actually gives me 8,000. So let's just put the 8,000 in there. I forgot I'd change the numbers to make it nicer. So that gives me 8,000. Now, that was what x cubed was, so I'm going to do the cube root of that and the cube root of 8,000... Well, we should know the cube root of 8, and the cube root of 8,000 will be 20. So the missing side was 20 centimetres high. All right, so it's a wee bit tricky, but just think, oh, how would I have got that volume? Plug into the, kind of, the, the formula as such, and then work around from there. Now, there is another method for this, and technically this was a non-calculator question. You would probably have to use the other method. So just to show you, right? The other option is, well, you can start by thinking, right, let's get my volume scale factor. So my volume scale factor would be, if I'm going to the enlargement, would be 1125 over 576, okay? Now, then your enlargement scale factor would be the cube root of this. So the cube root of that number. And you would need a calculator for this, though, to do that. And it gives you 1.25. Now, the reason I'm cube rooting it is, remember, working the, the normal way, you would get your scale factor, you would cube it, and you would times it by the corresponding volume. So working backwards, we get a volume scale factor, cube root, it's 1.25. So my missing length is just your enlargement scale factor of 1.25 times 16. And when you do that, you get the answer of 20 centimetres again. I don't particularly like this method as much, but um, I have seen a lot of people get taught that way for the exam. So it's worth being aware of both. Okay, second one is very similar. We're told that these sectors are mathematically similar. Calculate the radius of the smaller sector. So um, we've called the unknown X here. You can call it R if you want still. And again, I'm going to use the exact same approach. I'm going to think, right, okay, well, how would I have got the area of this smaller one? Now, we are talking area this time, so it's going to be scale factor squared. And so, right, well, I would have got my scale factor, x over 50. I would have squared it and multiplied by 1600. And I know that whatever I did, it gave me the answer of 576. I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to write this as x squared over 50 squared. I'm going to divide by the 1600 and do 576 over 1600. Now, what I've actually got there, that 576 over 1600 is really just my volume scale factor at this point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a wee bit of space. I'm going to cross multiply. 
So x squared will be my fraction times 50 squared, which gives me 900. And of course, that's what x squared was. So I need to square root of 900, which is 30. So the missing side was 30 centimetres on that one. Okay. Again, very quickly, just in case, I'm just going to show you the other method. So the other method would start by getting your area scale factor. So your area scale factor would be 576 over 1600. And then your length scale factor or your reduction scale factor would be the square root of that because it was an area question. Now, these aren't numbers you will necessarily know the square root of really easily. Um, so I think this would be a calculator paper. Um, and if you square root them, sorry, I'm just typing into my calculator, you get 0 0.6. So the missing side would be 50 times 0 0.6. Um, which is the same as 5 times 6, which is 30 centimetres, as we got before there as well. So I hope I'm not confusing by showing you the two methods. You will have a preference. Um, a lot of people have a guess and do a wee bit of both kind of methods in the exam, which isn't ideal, but um, do what works for you. One last example. We've got two mathematically similar bottles. Calculate the height of the larger bottle. So this one is based on volume. I said, right, well, I would have taken my scale factor and I would have taken it over 12 volume. I would have cubed it, multiplied by 200 and got the answer 1600. Now, that would have given me x cubed over 12 cubed equals 1600 divided by 200, um, which is, I'm just going to cheat here because I know that that's just 8. And then x cubed would have been 8 times 12 cubed, which gives me um, 13,824. And then if I take the cube root of that number, it gives me the answer of 24 centimetres. But my thinking is, what if this was a non-calculator question? How would I do this? without using a calculator. So there is a kind of another method there. When I go back to this second line here, if I leave that as x over 12 cubed equals 1600 divided by 200 was just 8, I could cube root the 8 from there. So I've got x over 12 is a cube root of 8. So x over 12 is 2. And then cross multiply by the 12, 2 times 12 is 24. So what's essentially happening here on that method, we're getting the volume scale factor is 8. We're getting the enlargement scale factor is the cube root of 8, which is 2. And then saying, right, or missing side is just 12 times 2. So this is a point in video. If you wanted to try any of your own, here are eight examples. It kind of goes area, volume, area, volume, area, volume, just to mix it up a wee bit. And then if you unpause the video, you'll get the answers. And there is the answers there. Um, I haven't specified which are on calculator for these ones. I really think these would probably be in a calculator paper. Um, but best of luck. I hope this is helped. Thanks for watching.